we kick off a new series about the ideas that changed our world. In coming weeks, we'll hear about antibiotics, the microscope and the jet engine. But first, we begin a programme that looks at that which surrounds us, that can irritate or inspire. It's architecture. Ideas that changed the world is sponsored by Standard Chartered Bank. Here for good. <laughs> Our world has been transformed by inspired ideas that we take for granted. Wherever we go, whatever we eat, however we live, it's all been shaped by these eureka moments. And these ideas are continuing to shape our future, the ideas that change the world. This week, from the world of architecture, four top-class experts each lay the foundations for a champion idea, which will have the crowd roaring as the game-winning idea that changed the world. First up, the arch. Is this a prototype for life on Mars? The Star Wars Death Star, perhaps? Welcome to the Technosphere, from the inventive mind of architect James Law. Right now, it's just a model, but soon this vast structure will house thousands of people in Dubai. And James has designed it using one of the founding principles in architecture, the arch. I think the arch has fundamentally been both the tool and the testament of man's creativity. The arch is symbolic of man's ability to shape his environment. The arch is symbolic of man's ability to understand the materials of this earth. When we see that gesture of the arch, we've seen the hand of man create the world around him. All right, he likes arches, we get it. But how do these architectural wonders work? The arch is, in its most simple terms, the transfer of forces in a way where that load can be transferred evenly to the ground. By using the tensile strength of materials, we're able to bridge over two points. In doing so, we're able to create a structure that we can go inside of and walk on top of. So it's all about using tension to create strength, allowing structures to be lighter yet immensely strong. Without it, we'd have no tunnels or bridges. It's such an ingenious design that arches are used everywhere in architecture and have been for thousands of years. Take the famous domes of Rome, Florence, London, St Paul's Cathedral. They're all solid arches in the round. The domes of classical architecture are great examples of the arch being taken to the next level. The great cathedral domes were really one of the most advanced pieces of engineering in those days. Arches have been at the heart of groundbreaking architecture for centuries. But some arches are shy and don't like making themselves obvious. Take the Golden Gate Bridge, for example. It's an arch turned upside down. And the arch goes way beyond being just a ground-based structure. It can fly, too. But the arch is used today in high-tech elements like aircraft. The arch actually forms the fuselage by repeating an arch element and tying them together. They become the fuselage of an aircraft. The possibilities for putting the arch in architecture are limitless, especially with the computer-aided design used by James to create what he calls cybertecture. Yes. Cybertecture is about the merging of the concrete, steel and glass of a conventional building with the new technologies and the new concepts of space, the computer allows us to create almost infinite forms of arches. The Cybertecture Egg is a new kind of building that uses the arch in a revolutionary way. Instead of a typical building which has many, many columns inside, this building entirely uses its external skin as a continuous arch, a diagrid which allows the egg to be supported entirely by the exoskeleton. The important thing about doing that is that we are able to free up the building so that it doesn't need to have columns obstructing the people inside. I think this is really the next generation of arch buildings for the world. 
This was once the stuff of science fiction, but why stop there? What about giving structures artificial intelligence to help them behave properly? There is every conceivable chance that the materials that are being created now and in the future will have a level of intelligence. If you can think about an arch being intelligent, the ability for that arch to be able to respond to different needs, the ability for it to change shape, the ability for it to intelligently detect earthquakes and therefore straddle a space differently to protect a building. This arch being developed out of new materials is more sustainable and more long-lasting, requiring less maintenance. And that's the level of intelligence which architecture is moving towards. For James, the future of building design is firmly linked to the original concepts of the arch. So I believe that some of these buildings, although they look very high-tech and they look very sci-fi, are actually the solutions that we're looking for. So the arch plays a strong supporting role then. And now for the sheer beauty of concrete. Pass any building site in the world and you'll see one of these in full swing. They mix the most popular construction material on earth and to satisfy man's needs, we produce around 50 tonnes of it every second. It is concrete. I think concrete is an incredible material. For me, it does all the things I want it to do. Renowned architect Zaha Hadid swears by this sludge. She loves it so much that it plays a starring role in her latest award-winning structure, the Maxi, in Rome. The idea was to inhabit structure. The structure and the actual object are one of the same. It looks light. That's why I think, it's a, for me, it's a great material. Because, you know, I don't think you can achieve the same smoothness with wood or cladding. For Zaha, concrete is a multi-purpose wonder like no other. It doesn't have only structural qualities. It has also formal qualities and light qualities. And I think it's very difficult to find all these things in one material. You know, I don't have to make a seal structure, then cover it with another structure, and cover it with cladding, and so on. It's one, you get everything in one, in one go. The Romans were past masters at mixing concrete. After 2,000 years, the Pantheon stands proud in the middle of Rome. And it's still a record breaker, boasting the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world. It has remained as empires have risen and fallen. But the heyday of concrete didn't come until the 20th century and the birth of modernism. Of course, I was very influenced by the, these buildings in the 60s, you know, because even as a child, you know, I mean, there was such a, an incredible interest in modernity in the time. Concrete set modernism in stone. The modernists' vision of a new, flexible way of life seemed to be embodied in this versatile material. It connected with optimistic political ideals, which offered a new, alternative future for all. There was a connection between modernity and the material. There was a connection between nation building and architecture, and also the idea of the new to represent the state. It coincided with the coming of age of many nations. Brazil went crazy about concrete. The new capital city of Brasilia was designed as an architectural statement by Oscar Niemeyer, all built with concrete. The Brazilians wanted to really move away from colonialism and invent a new identity through architecture. And I think that's what is very exciting about it. It was very symbolic. It was no accident that they adopted that kind of work. Of course, not everybody is a fan of this architectural grey matter. And you can see why with these uh, striking examples. Nice. Even celebrated modernist developments like London's South Bank caused traditionalists to splutter with indignation when it first appeared. 
If you look at the work in Brazil or Argentina or places like that or Mexico, it's very different because you can have very thin and very light profiles. Uh, while well, if you look at it in London, which is always very wet and rainy, it might look very grim and unpleasant. Today, concrete is still offering adventure in modern architecture. What concrete does for Zaha Hadid's Maxi is the opposite of heavy, boring and ugly. It had to be very precise. Concrete is very interesting because you can achieve lightness through a very heavy material. In a way, it fits the idea of fluidity and form. You can also achieve large spans through it. You can have very thin profiles. I always felt it was like achieving transparency through a heavy material. So, concrete is still winning awards at the cutting edge of architecture. And it's here for the foreseeable future, at least until we find another material to build our roads with and form the foundations of our buildings. Join us after the break as we take a trip to the top in the gravity-defying elevator and chill out with climate control.